it going. So, uh, as I all said before, you know, I was going to do this E3 predictions thing. Uh, I was just waiting to kind of, you know, find a good time to do it, as well as see if any of my friends wanted to join. Unfortunately, everyone's busy, so couldn't get any of the cool commentary in here, but I thought I'd do something nice, you know, put some editing in and effort in, because, you know, you guys enjoy and deserve, you know, some quality content. So, we're going to be going over all the press conferences, all right, Bethesda, Microsoft, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, Sony, Square Enix, and the PC Gaming Show. And I'm going to detail exactly what I want to see at the press conferences, um, some rumors, you know, that's been circulating that we may see, and just, you know, so on and so forth from that, right? There are two pages here of, uh, you know, predictions that I typed out and everything like that, so... This is basically just what I want to see, alright, and uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool if we do this, and uh, let's get on right to it. So Bethesda Game Studios is first, alright. Uh, Bethesda, you know, the, obviously I think what we're going to see is we're going to have this huge reveal for Fallout 4, the gameplay. We're going to see officially, you know, some good unedited first person combat gameplay and third person, you know, since the game's always offered both choices. Um, what I would really, really like to see from this gameplay, I really want to see how the gunplay has evolved. Hopefully it's not as, you know, static and very, uh, you know, not, not as very... I just wish that it would be more fluid, you know, because Fallout 3's combat was good, but it was very... It, it, it was very difficult to pinpoint exactly where you wanted to shoot someone firing from the hip. Most of the time we all just used VATS and VATS was, you know, easy. You just target the thing, he would automatically shoot. Most of the time, if you were the appropriate level, he would get the kill. Um, but the actual shooting mechanics from itself with, you know, aiming and firing from the hip was not really as fluid or robust as I really, you know, wanted and hoped it would be. So. Um, they kind of fixed the fluidity of combat with Skyrim, so I'm hoping that they would just take that and kind of build upon it for Fallout 4. So hopefully we'll get some nice 10 minute unedited gameplay here, um, showing, you know, well, what the game is like, the combat, and uh, the different options for upgrading and whatnot. Uh, do keep in mind that I am going to the Bethesda press conference, so it's gonna be pretty exciting to actually see it there a lot. It's gonna be pretty cool. Um, next up is Doom, alright? Doom, you know, has been revealed. It's going to be a reboot. This is not Doom 4. It's going to be an official reboot for the series. If you did buy, if you guys remember, if you bought Wolfenstein New Order, it does grant us access to the Doom beta, which kind of leads to the point that there will be multiplayer mode in some way. If it's going to be humans versus monsters, or, 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 or maybe it's a uh, beta somehow for like a single player demo or something, like kind of uh, how Square Enix did for Final Fantasy XV with Episode Duske. So I don't know what the beta is going to entail, but hopefully we'll get some beta details and we'll finally see the Doom reveal gameplay. Uh, at E3. I think both Doom and Fallout 4 are probably going to be the big shows there, and uh, that'd be pretty cool. Next up is Dishonored 2, an official announcement. It's been rumors. I mean, like, seriously, we've had, like, some leaked screenshots of some briefing where it was showing the Dishonored 2 logo. Um, there's been other rumors that Arcane Studios has been working on it and that it's going to be coming out for next gen only, or current gen only, excuse me. So it'd be really, really awesome if they would just, you know, do like a nice reveal trailer, just a couple minutes showing, you know, basically, or even a couple seconds for that matter. Basically, you know, showing the world, maybe a different world, different protagonist, and, um, you know, really delving into more powers and stuff with Dishonored 2, but an official announcement for Dishonored 2 would be really, really nice, and I would like to see that game sometime in 2017. Uh, and then, this is kind of like a, you know, a, this would be a perfect case scenario. Prey 2, come on, come on. It's always the games that you love, and it's always the games that look amazing that are the ones that get canceled. Why, why? This, I was so looking forward to Prey 2, it was my most anticipated game of 2012 and then it just got dropped, you know? So we knew, we do know from everything that Human Head is no longer working on the game, if, if anyone's working on the game, it's not Human Head Studios. They left, now they're working on mobile games. Uh, but we don't know, there's a rumor that Arcane Studios themselves was working on Prey 2, but that rumor was diminished, they're not, they're not working on it. But I would really love to see Prey 2 come back and have it be like the same original vision maybe just a little bit more fine-tuned, a little bit more open, but the vision that they had where it was like, you know, Mass Effect combined 
like a Mass Effect art style and world and and lore combined with gameplay like Mirror's Edge with bounty hunting and and it, it would look so freaking awesome. It was it was incredible. So please, please bring back Prey 2 and bring it back to its original vision that Human Head Studios was creating. That probably won't happen, but in a perfect world scenario, I would just love to see them bring back Prey 2. And I did play the original Prey a few years ago because I was so excited for Prey 2 and hoping that it would come back, and I did actually enjoy the original Prey. If you haven't played the original Prey, give it a go. You can find it on Xbox 360, and I believe it's on PC as well. You might want to get the PC version, because the 360 version that I played had some frame rate issues. So that's all I'm really expecting from Bethesda. I'm kind of thinking to myself, Bethesda, you know, I know they published some games, but people, people, um, people were saying, uh, uh, you know, that, hey, why don't, why, or do you think that we're going to see, um, uh, like, a, like another, I don't know, like another Evil Within, or, because that game came out, like, very soon. So they're not going to, you know, announce any of those games that we saw last year, like the Evil Within, uh, like a sequel to that, this soon, you know. We have to wait till next year's E3, that seems more likely, you know. It's, it's way too soon to keep asking for some of these games, uh, the sequels already. But, yeah, that's all I really have for Bethesda, not that much. Um, let me know if I missed anything, guys. Um, but, yeah, follow up for gameplay, 10 minutes would be sweet. Doom gameplay and the beta information, Dishonored 2's announcement trailer, and Parade 2 details what's going on with that game. Alright, let's move on. Alright, so next up we have Microsoft. Uh, their press conference is the first one on Monday. So, uh, and I am attending that one, by the way. So, obviously, they're probably going to do what they did very similar last year, but I think in a much bigger way, alright? I think they're honestly going to open it again with Call of Duty Black Ops 3 reveal. It's just to be expected. You know, we got the reveal trailer. We got to see, you know, oh, the game has Deus Ex style story. You can change your arm into weapons like Deus Ex, and it's Deus Ex with Call of Duty. It's like a mashup. Um, Black Ops, the original Black Ops was my favorite Call of Duty um, out of all of them, uh, even surpassing the original Modern Warfare. I really love that one. But um, Black Ops 3, I'm looking at it and I'm like, so. You can do more things like Titanfall, and then you can change your arm into a weapon like Deus Ex, and then it's set in a futuristic world where people take on technology and integrate it, integrate it into their lifestyle and society like Deus Ex. So there's already tons of you know information and uh, uh, just people already pointing the finger at Trey, Treyarch for being like, hey, you guys literally copied Deus Ex and put it in Call of Duty. But yeah, we're gonna see a gameplay reveal undoubtedly. You know, Microsoft and, and Activision with the Call of Duty series are like, you know, besties. So we're gonna see some gameplay reveal of the campaign, most likely, like we did for Advanced Warfare. Alright. Next up, Rise of the Tomb Raider. We are going to see gameplay at the Microsoft briefing. If you guys uh, didn't know already, the release date has been leaked supposedly by Amazon, and the Rise of the Tomb Raider release is supposed to be November 13th, which is actually pretty realistic considering that Halo is launching in October, Microsoft is going to want, you know, that exclusive game to be in November. So Rise of the Tomb Raider, November 13th, uh, supposedly from Amazon, but we're going to see some nice gameplay. I would love to see six to seven minutes of gameplay. Six to seven minutes of gameplay showcasing the beautiful graphics, stress effects, uh, the different styles of play. I would love to see stealth really come into play more. I know it was an option in the first game, but it was only at, at set moments. So I would love to see, if, if from everything I've read on the game, um, combat is much more diverse. And you can actually go and take on enemies in different types of ways, and approach the, le the levels in many different ways at all. It's even more open-ended than it was in the first game. But seeing uh, you know the, the initial gameplay reveal, six to seven minutes of gameplay would be freaking sweet running on the Xbox One and uh, we'll have to see what they do. It would be freaking awesome if they could do like they did with the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition for the you know PS4 at least and make the frame rate unlocked at 1080p. That would be amazing. So yeah, let's hope for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, you know, some really sweet gameplay and uh, we're undoubtedly gonna see that, but let's hope uh, it really does turn out to be fantastic. Uh, next up is Forza Motorsport 6, the gameplay uh, trailer. Uh, we know it's coming. Again, this is another game that was leaked by Amazon. I believe it's coming September 16th, supposedly, uh, from Amazon. So, I'm a huge fan of the Forza series. I think it's it's my favorite racing series out there. 
Um, I used to be a Gran Turismo fan. Then I played Forza 3. Forza 3 blew me away. Then I played Forza 4. Forza 4 blew me away. Forza 5 was fantastic. Forza Horizon was fantastic. Forza Horizon 2 was fantastic. So every single game in the series that I played from Forza 3 on, including the Horizon titles, were fantastic. So Forza 6, I think it's safe to say it's going to be fantastic, but I, I, I just I think it's just me, all right? Because no one seems to be complaining that Microsoft has now given us three Forza games in the span of three years. You know, Forza 5, 2013, Forza Horizon 2, 2014, and now Forza 6 in 2015. I mean, I, please Microsoft, don't do this annualized franchise crap. Because I, I really don't want it for the Forza series. Because I feel like I just played Horizon 2. And I really enjoyed it. I know, it's not, I know again, this is not it is a simulator this time, alright? But seriously, I just don't feel like it's time. I don't feel like I miss Forza at all. I just feel like, oh, I just played a Forza game. Or a Horizon or even the main motorsport series. It all feels very familiar and all feels like it came too quickly. So, Microsoft, please calm down with the Forza Motorsport series. Give it a few years. After six, give it three years. Long development cycle. Then come out with Forza 7. Blow everyone away. Because Gran Turismo went downhill ever since Gran Turismo 5 came out. So, Forza Motorsport 6, we're probably going to see a game preview trailer for that. Scalebound, you guys remember this game was revealed back uh, last year's E3 with a uh, CGI trailer. We don't know what type of game it's going to be. I think it's, I think it's just hack and slash from what I, from what I can gather. Uh, but Scalebound, the, uh, we're probably going to see the reveal gameplay for that with um, hopefully a release in sometime in 2016. And uh, we'll have to see. I, I, really, I can't really say much on the game because I really don't know, but I do have a friend of mine who's really excited to see more about Scalebound. So uh, we'll probably undoubtedly see a gameplay reveal of that. That'd be pretty cool. Now Halo 5 Guardians, of course, is to be expected. We're probably gonna, they're probably going to reveal single-player gameplay, um, showcasing uh, maybe two different points of view from Spartan Locke or Master Chief. It's good. I, I don't know how the, the campaign goes. If there's two campaigns, one campaign's Master Chief, one campaign's Spartan Locke, or there's one campaign and you have to play both parts, both characters at the same time. I, I don't know how the um, actual campaign is detailed. But we're going to see some single player gameplay. Hopefully they boosted the resolution of the beta because 720p, I mean, really? I mean, I know it's a beta, but come on. Get, get the game up to 1080p, 1080p, get it at 60 frames per second, make the visuals outstanding because the graphics didn't even blow me away in the beta, it just looked like Halo. So, yes, you know, do something really freaking awesome, alright? Of course, you know, this is a rumor, this, is, this, is, this was a secret and it keeps getting linked, it's not really a secret anymore. Uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, alright, this is the Xbox One remastered, re-released, they're going to be remastering the first one. I'm surprised they didn't try to do Gears of War Marcus Phoenix Collection, because I think a lot of people would have loved that, but they're just remastering the first game, supposedly. So, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, we're probably going to get a trailer for that, and we're probably going to get a release date for that, alright? They're not going to show off gameplay because it's a remastered game, they're just going to do what they did with Halo um, 5, um, I'm sorry, not Halo 5, Halo the Master Chief Collection, show off a trailer, um, show uh, show maybe like a minute or two of gameplay, and then announce the release date. And it's probably going to be coming out the end of this year. Um, so yeah, I hope that they actually did what they did for Halo 2 and like redo the cutscenes, and so everything's like super ultra realistic CGI. Can you imagine playing that? That'd be freaking sweet if they did that for the original Gears of War for the Ultimate Edition, all right? Um, now I can cross this one out because this I wrote this before you know this news was made official. I was like, oh, I want to see Quantum Break gameplay and a release date reveal. Well, guess what? Remedy came out and they basically said, no, we're skipping E3. We'll be at Gamescom. So no, we're not going to see Quantum Break gameplay, which I'm really bummed about because that's like my most anticipated Xbox One title overall is Quantum Break. Um, but. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till Gamescom until we hear any new information on the game. At Gamescom, we'll probably get more gameplay, and we'll also probably get a um, release date for the game as well. That'd be pretty cool. All right, uh, they're probably gonna talk about Microsoft Hololens. This is their VR tech, um, you know, headset that's not really in direct competition with Project Morpheus and um, uh, the Oculus Rift. It's more of a more of an it's really hard to explain. It's more augmented reality than it is virtual reality. 
where you kind of put these sunglasses on and you can interact with the web base as you're looking around. So I wonder if they're going to do something in terms of games where you put on the HoloLens and instead of your health bar being displayed on the TV, it's displayed like right here. It's like floating in your living room or in your bedroom and you can like touch everything and be really interactable. So that's probably what they're going to do. And uh, you might see things like some 3D effects where if someone's shooting at you, the bullets fly out of the television past you, you know, and, and when it hits you, it turns, everything turns dim and red. They'll probably do something like that, but I actually, to be honest with you, I'm more interested in, Pro in um, HoloLens than I am in Project Morpheus, because HoloLens is a little bit different in that respect, and it's not as insane. You know, Oculus Rift was like $1,500, um, I think for a development kit it was, or, or cons I forget, was it $1,500 for the consumer to purchase, or was it $1,500 for the developers to purchase as far as a development kit? I, I forgot which one it was, but... Yeah, I'm more interested in, in Microsoft HoloLens, so they're probably going to give us some details. This technology is probably not even going to be out next year. It'll probably be 2018, to be honest with you. You know, because they're going to want to perfect this, and they're not going to they're not going to want this to be another flop like Kinect was. So they're kind of, they're going to want to spend a lot of time with this. And plus, HoloLens has more uses outside of just gaming. Uh, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see them talk about that. And hopefully, they will talk about it and give you know give details and whatnot regarding uh, how it works with games and whatnot. Uh, oh, okay, some of you guys are going to be really excited about this. What if, what if they came out with a revival trailer, all right, revival trailer for Perfect Dark, the series? A lot of people have been screaming for Perfect Dark to return. It was a launch title for 360, Perfect Dark Zero. I don't think it did that well. Um, but with next-gen visuals, and, and, and with, you know, a, a really open-ended gameplay, something really fantastic, action-packed, quick. You can take Perfect Dark, bring it back on Xbox One, I think we'll be really freaking psyched to see that. So, yeah, the revival of the Perfect Dark series, that'd be pretty freaking sweet, alright? Uh, I would love to have this happen, uh, because we haven't heard anything on it. Uh, D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die Season 2, alright? We have it ported to PC, it just came out for PC the first season. And if you haven't played D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die, the first season on Xbox One or PC, um, definitely play it. You know, even, it, 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 it's a very quirky game, but if you, if, if you can appreciate, at least, at least appreciate the Japanese culture and that whole quirkiness, it's a lot of fun. So, and, and this is, it's pretty interesting for me because I'm generally not a fan of that culture, but I do appreciate it from time to time. And I played D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die. Uh, the first season, and it was like a, it immediately hooked me. It was really interesting, and uh, I liked where the story was going. It was really over the top, uh, quirky, and I would really love to see them bring a season two. The game sold very poorly in the beginning, but as time went on, the game sold a lot more to the point where it sold over a million copies. So where is season two? I hope Swery, uh, Swery brings it back, you know, and comes comes out on E3 stage at Xbox and just says, yes, season two is coming, we're working on it, don't worry, it's not dead, because we were scared in the beginning when this game came out if we were ever going to get a second season because of how poorly it did in the very beginning. But over time, it's amassed quite a big audience, all right? Um, because Microsoft and Ubisoft are kind of, you know, again, besties with this game, uh, probably going to see something regarding Tom Clancy's The Division. Last year they showed gameplay, we'll probably see gameplay again um, this year, if not gameplay, at least a trailer. I don't know if Ubisoft's going to want to save the gameplay, a new gameplay for the, the Division for their press conference, or if they're going to give it to Microsoft, have them show off the gameplay, and then just run a trailer at their uh, Ubisoft's press conference for the Division. So. But we'll see something regarding the, the division, uh, regardless, because of uh, you know this is like Microsoft's baby um, regarding with with Ubisoft. You know they're they're in really tight partnership, and I believe they get the DLC first for the game too. Um, and this was again, this is another one I can cross out. I, I don't. What's with all these companies? Like it's a couple days before E3, and everyone's like saying, "Oh look, here's our big surprises," and they're revealing all this stuff. I'm like, it's less than a week away. Why are you revealing all this stuff? Um, I was gonna say, oh, reveal for one terabyte Xbox One console. Guess what? It happened a day ago. And at one terabyte Xbox One was revealed, new controller, 500 gigabyte is gonna stay at 350. So, um, there's a one terabyte Xbox One console. I thought it was gonna be shown at the, the E3 press conference. I thought it was gonna be a, a reveal, but no, it's not. It's just whatever. So, anyway, that's all I have for Microsoft press conference. You know, let me add something. We're probably gonna see Crackdown gameplay. 
I'm not so interested because I never played the original Crackdown or any of the Crackdown games, and uh, I'm just, I don't know, I don't know if it's really my cup of tea, but we'll probably see some Crackdown gameplay if that, alright? So moving on, let's go uh, talk about uh, Electronic Arts. Oh yeah, Electronic Arts, alright? We got, we got only a few here, only a few, but big names, alright? Electronic Arts has a lot of, you know, very few, but huge, humongous games that we're all, like, really looking forward to, alright? First we're gonna see is Star Wars Battlefront gameplay, and I thought of a very interesting marketing scheme, and I wonder if they're gonna try to do this, alright? So remember what I said, remember what I'm about to tell you right now, and then when the press conference come around, let's see if they actually do that. So they're gonna talk, they're gonna show Star Wars Battlefront gameplay, right? And they're gonna reveal the map, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna... I think I think uh, from what all the rumors are gathering at, and, and the and the preview that you know Dice put up, we're probably going to see the battle at Hoth. All right, Star Wars Battlefront gameplay. What if they did this? What if they showed Star Wars Battlefront gameplay, ended it halfway through the match, and then said, "Watch the second part of the match at the Sony press conference," because Sony and EA regarding Battlefront are besties. Alright, they had the marketing deal and, and Sony Sony gathered that up really quickly. I'm actually surprised Microsoft didn't. I thought Microsoft would have been like all over that because they got Battlefield 4, you know, but Sony got Battlefront, alright? But I think if they're... that'd be pretty interesting. A two-part gameplay, they're going to show the first part or half of the match at, at EA's press conference, then take the other half of the match and put it at the Sony press conference. Pretty interesting, and we'll probably see gameplay probably on the PlayStation 4, running on the PlayStation 4, hopefully. It's not just a PC, you know, kind of vacant, oh, look, it's the PlayStation 4 version, but it's really the PC version. So, we'll have to see how it is, alright? But, yeah, Star Wars Battlefront gameplay, I wonder if they're going to do the first part and the second part thing, well, between Sony and EA's press conference. That'll be pretty interesting, remember that, and then let's see if they actually do it, see if I was right, alright? Mirror's Edge gameplay, it's coming, it's been confirmed, they're going to show the game, my excitement is 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 just it's 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 too much for words, all right? Ten minute gameplay, give it to us. Ten minutes, uncut, unedited, running on a high end PC. Showcase the open world. Showcase dyna the dynamic combat. Showcase side missions. Showcase that you can not only go on the rooftops, you can also climb buildings, go inside the buildings then go on the street and show the civilians and stuff freaking out, I'll show, show you guys parkouring over cars, fucking do it, alright, but seriously, 10 minutes gameplay for Mirror's Edge, I would love to see it, 10 minutes, make it 10 minutes, make it long, your press conference is only an hour long, make this gameplay reveal long, cut into the time on, on worthless sports games, and, and just make this a huge ass reveal, because this, is something people are really looking forward to. Battlefront and Mirror's Edge are your two things that people are most looking forward to at this press conference, without a doubt, all right? Do it. All right, next up, sports games for 2015 and 2016. They're gonna talk about this. They're gonna go up and say, oh, no, it's FIFA, NBA, NHL, uh, football, uh, and all these, all these freaking, you know, Sports. They're going to talk about them, and then they're going to reveal them and say, Oh no, it's FIFA 15, or FIFA 16, and it's going to be huge. There's going to be more graphs on the field than last year's game. There's going to be more music to play, you know? It, it's Whatever the sports games are, they show just a little bit of it, they add a little bit, and then they ship it out. And then they spend about 30 minutes of their press conference talking about sports games when they barely spent that, enough, that much time developing this, the next year's iteration for the franchise. Like, you know they're already working on FIFA 2017. You know that already. They're, they're we're working on it. Alright? Got multiple teams. Probably working on FIFA 2018. Alright? Um, Need for Speed gameplay reveal. Uh, we're gonna see, we're probably gonna see that. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Mass Effect 4 gameplay reveal. Yes, or at least gameplay trailer or something. Show, and they're probably gonna reveal, it's not gonna be called Mass Effect 4, it's gonna be called something else. But, you know, Mass Effect, the subtitle, alright? Show it to us, okay? And then this, I would love to see this. Visceral's, uh, Visceral Games Star Wars game, alright? Visceral Games Star Wars game, yes. Alright, the one that Amy Hennig is working on that supposedly is third person and has an open world structure, alright? I hope that she's bringing back Star Wars 1313. 
one can only hope, but it'd be pretty freaking sweet if they come out with Battlefront gameplay, and at the very end, at the very end, they showcase, yes, Star Wars 1313 is alive, we're rebooting it, it's going to be open world, it's going to be freaking awesome. You have the writer for Uncharted on there, you're going to have a great ass story, yes, alright, looking forward to that, alright. So that was EA's press conference, that's all I have. Their press conferences are normally an hour long, so there isn't really much I can really put in here or say, because they only have an hour to do all that shit. So, alright, let's move on to Ubisoft's. Ubisoft! Now Ubisoft has, uh, they always do something cool at their press conferences, um, at the very end. So, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, what I'm expecting to see. Tom Clancy's The Division, again, they're going to show a trailer, or if there is no gameplay shown at the Microsoft press conference, they're going to show gameplay here, all right? So they might they might open with Tom Clancy's The Division, all right? Assassin's Creed Syndicate, they're probably going to show a gameplay reveal. Um, I know that they showed gameplay for uh, Unity at the Microsoft press conference, but actually the marketing is different this time. Uh, Sony actually has the marketing for Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Which is interesting. It's, it's Ubisoft hops between. I, I have no idea, but it's weird because Sony had the marketing deal for Assassin's Creed for quite a long time. Microsoft stole it with Unity, and now Sony has it again with Syndicate. So go figure. But Assassin's Creed Syndicate, we're gonna see some new gameplay and uh, you know a, a release date. They're gonna give us a release date. All right. No, actually, wait. They already gave us a release date, right? It's coming like October twenty something, twenty seventh. They already gave us a release date, but they're going to show more Assassin's Creed because Assassin's Creed ships and makes money. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, probably going to see some new gameplay of that, and we're probably get, going to get some beta details, all right? How you can join the beta, when the beta is going to take place, um, different ways you can get into the beta, and how the beta is going to help um, the development of Rainbow Six Siege, all right? I'm, I'm looking at the game, I'm like, okay. So it's multiplayer, it's always seen as multiplayer, you know, short co-op, cooperative, competitive multiplayer where you're for your people, for your friends, you go in there and you rescue hostages. What more does the game have to offer? That's my question. What more does Rainbow Six Siege have to offer? Is there a single player campaign? Is there um, a competitive kind of team deathmatch multiplayer mode? Or is it just straight up find a hostage, uh, take care of the hostage, and, and What's the deal with that, all right? Are we gonna see, is there gonna be something more to this game? Because if it's just one game mode and one house, why are you charging $60 for that bullshit? So, I wanna see them do something with Rainbow Six Siege because, hey, like I wanna get into it, I wanna get excited, but you haven't shown me anything I can really get excited about except a cooperative multiplayer thing, which is fun if you have friends who wanna play with you, but I mean, is there gonna be a campaign? Really? Come on. So, like uh, Ubisoft always does, we're probably going to see a brand new IP revealed, alright? Um, last year's it was uh, Rainbow Six Siege, the year before that it was Tom Clancy's The Division, and the year before that it was Watch Dogs. Actually no, Watch Dogs was a while ago. The year before that it was, um, was it Far Cry 4? You know at the end of every press conference they do some big reveal, oh we're bringing back another Far Cry, we're going to do Watch Dogs, we're going to do Rainbow Six, we're going to do Tom Clancy's Siege, or the, the Division, you know? So, what new IP are they going to show at the end of their press conference today, or, or when that takes place, um, that we're all going to be excited about? Is it going to be a new Splinter Cell? I cannot wait. Did they bring a new Splinter Cell game? Yes, but I feel like it's too soon because Splinter Cell came out in, the last one came out in 2013. I don't expect another Splinter Cell game until 2016 to hear about it, but... Maybe a, hey, we're working on our Splinter Cell game, here's a little sneak peek 30 second trailer, maybe something like that? That'd be pretty cool. Um, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier 2 announcement, alright? You guys probably don't know what happened to Future Soldier, you know, you don't know, you maybe never played Future Soldier, alright? Future Soldier was a decent game that got delayed many times, it was supposed to come out years ago before it did. And it came out, and the graphics were outdated, but it was a pretty fun, intense game. Like, the multiplayer was pretty fun, uh, the campaign was fun to play around, um, and it had a lot going for it, but it never really, it never really, you know, hit the mark on anything. So, I would love to see him come out and say, yes, we're doing Future Soldier 2. There's actually some rumors that Future Soldier 2 is in development, so a reveal trailer for Future Soldier 2, showcasing, hey, we're gonna bring it back, it's gonna be bigger, badder, better, faster, more intense than the first one. Yes, another Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier sequel, alright? 
Then they're gonna talk about their party games for 2015 and 2016. They're just dance games and bullshit like that, that, you know, for, for the casuals. And then, hopefully, a new driver game. Maybe that will be the new IP. Maybe the new driver game will be a new IP that they're gonna reveal. Because let's be honest here, driver, I, I mean, I played Parallel Lines, or Parallel Lines was pretty fun. Played San Francisco. I really enjoyed San Francisco. But I would love to see him come back here and do like a driver game. Make it a massive, massive open world. Be freaking sweet. Um, and and to all these car customization, create your own person. It has more RPG elements than the first. The, the, the San Francisco was way more story focused. And the story was pretty, you know, it was like average, but it was fun. It was like a fun storyline. Um, so I really hope that they would bring Driver back, make it bigger, make it better, make a more customization with the cars, make you make it ha put some RPG elements in there. That's what I would say. Put some RPG elements in there, get it going. I'm re I would really look forward to another Driver game. It's time. It's it's time. Come on, man. Driver of San Francisco came out in 2011, I believe. It's been four years. It was another Driver game. Come on. So maybe maybe for the new IP reveal at the end of their press conference, they're going to reveal that, but. Driver game, that'd be pretty cool. And I know a lot of you people probably forgot about Driver series. So, all right, that's all I have for Ubisoft. Let's go on to Sony's. Sony, I have a lot written down for Sony because Sony has the potential to reveal a lot. You know, their press conference, Sony's press conference, is the longest out of everyone. It's usually two hours at the very least. So we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna move on here. Go go through a lot of different details. All right. Uncharted for a Thief's End. We're gonna get. Gameplay, a brand new gameplay, um, different from the PlayStation experience. We're gonna have to see if the graphics, if they improve the graphics, because I know a lot of people say, oh, graphics weren't as good as the reveal trailer that supposedly was in an engine, um, but didn't translate well with the gameplay. I thought the game still looked amazing to begin with, but they've been working on it and they said the graphics have been a little bit improved since, and I would really like to see them like really get the hair right get all the effects going, so a full official Uncharted 4 Thieves End gameplay. I want to see how Sully and Elena look, you know? Who wants? To, I want to see how they look on next gen. We've only seen Drake, and I want to see how they look. It'd be pretty awesome if we get like a reveal. We have all the cast back together, Sully's there, Elena's there, throwing Chloe, throwing Cutter, you know, just keep keep adding like all these characters here, and I want to really want to see how the hardware, you know, has improved on next gen. On, Next gen, how, how their faces have been reanimated and everything like that. Be pretty freaking sweet. So, they're going to show some gameplay and they're probably going to give us a release date. Remember, it's supposed to be out in the first quarter of 2016 before April. All right? That's The Division, that's Mirror's Edge, and that's Uncharted 4 just in the first quarter of 2016. Oh, I forgot. Dead Island, Dead Island 2 is also supposed to be coming during that time if you're super excited for that. But all those games coming in the first quarter of 2016. Are you freaking insane? I mean, th those are three potential Game of the Year candidates right at the beginning of the year. So 2016, provided nothing gets delayed, is is, is gonna be un unreal. It's probably gonna be one of the, if done correctly, it's gonna be one of the best years ever in gaming history. So look forward to it. Um, Star Wars Battlefront gameplay. Show us the second part from that half, um, that half video that I hope EA will do. That'd be pretty freaking sweet. End it at the Sony press conference. You know, it, it'd be pretty awesome if they showed how it looked on PC, then went and showed how it looked on PS4. Yes, it'd be pretty cool. But they probably won't do that. They're probably just going to show it on PS4 or just on high end PC. Um, but yeah, Star Wars Battlefront. Probably see more gameplay uh, information about that. Gran Turismo 7, a reveal and with a holiday 2015 release date. Now, Polyphony Digital did come out and they did say, hey, you will see Gran Turismo 7 before 2017. Which leads us to believe that we will not see it this year, we will see it next year, alright? But, Sony, you're hurting, alright? Not, not in the fact with console sales, but at the end of this year, you're hurting. You don't have really any games besides Until Dawn. You threw together the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection. And I'm like, ser seriously, Grand Turismo 7, you may need it for holiday 2015. You, you may need it because um, Grand Turismo is the best selling PlayStation franchise in history, I believe. And uh, do it better. I mean, seriously, Grand Turismo 5 sucked. It was awful. 
You had Gran Turismo 4, which was good. You had Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, which was a great build-up to see how Gran Turismo 5 would have been. And then Gran Turismo 5 comes out, and it's all quantity over quality. When, ha when most of the cars, not even half, most of the cars in the game don't have nice graphics and don't have a cockpit view. So, seriously. You know, it's like, do, do it, um... Do Gran Turismo 7 right. Do it right. You know, sure, you don't have to have a thousand plus cars. You don't need a thousand plus cars. Just make what you have quality content and people will play it. So seriously, get it right. Because as a Gran Turismo, I was a Gran Turismo fan, and Forza stole me. Because Forza is a better game. Just, just mechanically, the way it handles and the quality level of Forza, so much far, far further superior than anything Gran Turismo has to offer in the, in the recent years. So. Grand Turismo 7, reveal it, holiday 2015 release, do it. You probably won't see it until next year though, alright? Uh, PlayStation, or, I'm sorry, not PlayStation, Powers, they're probably going to talk about Powers, their TV show. I didn't watch it, I don't know anyone who else who watched it. They're probably going to show Season 2. Season 2 of Powers, what the fucking do? Alright? Until Dawn, new gameplay, we know the game is coming out in August, and I do have the game pre-ordered, so they're probably going to reveal a uh, new gameplay for Until Dawn. Gonna be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to that game. It's like heavy rain with a horror twist. It's gonna be really freaking sweet. All right. Project Morpheus. They're gonna reveal a release window at E3. Release window, and they're gonna also detail how it's gonna work with specific games. But Project Morpheus, we will see before in, in the first half of 2016. They said they're gonna give us a release window, probably spring 2016, and uh, they're, they're not gonna reveal the price. They're not gonna reveal the price. Let's just be honest here. But Project Morpheus, you're gonna talk about a release window in details and things like that, alright? Red Dead Redemption 2. There's been rumors that Rockstar is hiring for an ambitious open world project, and it was the same Rockstar studio that developed Red Dead Redemption. Now, Rockstar and Sony are besties, alright? So they're gonna be uh, revealing anything that Rockstar has to show, if anything. Grand Tree, uh, or not Grand Tree, well. Grand Theft Auto 5 DLC, or even better, Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, I played Red Dead Redemption, um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I, I, I thought it was okay. I, I wasn't in love with it like everyone else. I just don't like westerns. I, don't, I just hate the western, the, the, the whole atmosphere of it, and, and the whole time frame, I, I just hate it. It's just not, I don't like western whatsoever, alright? Red Dead Redemption was a technical masterpiece, though, I will give it that. But, um, yeah, do Red Dead Redemption 2 reveal, come out and say, oh yeah, it's good, the world's gonna be much more larger going to be a, a real real turning point for, for the game, you're going to be able to do all this cool stuff, do it, I think people would love to see that, alright? Um, the new game from Guerrilla Games, the studio um, behind Killzone, Project Horizon as its code name is called, they're probably, it'd be pretty squee if they actually come out and say yes, we're going to be revealing the new game, give us a title, give us a brief trailer, you don't have to show gameplay just yet because it's still pretty early. But give us a brief trailer and give us an official title for your new IP. Pretty freaking sweet. Show off, hopefully, try to do in-game visuals for the trailer because the only really games, they're, they're technical masterpiece. And Kill Killzone has always looked tremendous. And still to this day, as a launch title, Killzone Shadowfall is one of the best looking games I find on PS4. So, do it. Um, the re-reveal for The Last Guardian, I said it, alright, there's rumors circulating that Mark Cerny and his team are working on um, finishing The Last Guardian for the PlayStation 4, it's, complete, it's getting completely retooled, completely revisualized, and there's rumors that it will be re-revealed at E3. Sony, if you do that, people, the internet will lose their minds. You get Fallout 4 reveal, and then you get The Last Guardian come back all in one year? Seriously? People are going to be pretty, pretty freaking excited. So, people are going to go bananas for this game. The thing is, The Last Guardian would have never been popular, would have never been as popular, if they didn't delay it or hype it up as much as they did. You know, they showed that one trailer, people were like, oh, this looks really interesting. And they delayed it, and then they delayed it, and then they didn't talk about it, and now people are losing their minds over this game that we don't even know how it's going to play. So, we're going to see something like that. The Last Guardian we reveal, alright? They're now, Sony's going to come out and reveal their 1TB PlayStation 4, and uh, it's probably going to be 450 They're probably going to up the price of the 1TB PlayStation 4, even though you can, even for, you can spend $400 on the PlayStation 4, and 
with stores are so cheap. You could probably spend twenty or thirty dollars more than it would have cost you for the one terabyte model and get two terabyte upgraded to your five hundred gigabyte PS4, like I did. There's two terabytes in my PS4, and I still have a terabyte left in storage with all my games. All right. So, but they're probably going to reveal the one terabyte PS4 console. Yippee did, yippee did, yippee do. Uh, Ratchet and Clank the PS4 game trailer, I believe they just uploaded that today. Again, like, why are you revealing all these E3 things ahead of E3? I don't, I don't get it, but... Show off Ratchet and Clank game for PS4, and also talk about the movie. Give us a release date for the movie, alright? Because I know some people are looking actually forward to that, alright? Indie titles! They're gonna talk about indie games because Sony loves indie games. Indie games on PS4, yes, alright? Here are the ones I want to see. Uh, Soma, more gameplay for that. Uh, we're really looking forward to you know that game from the guys who made uh, um, Amnesia. No Man's Sky, give us a release date and tell us what the hell this fucking game is. I, I don't know what this game is. It's an exploration game, but what do you do? What, what do you do in the game? I, I don't know. All right, everybody's gone to the Rapture. I was gonna say reveal gameplay, but they did that already last week. And gameplay is very similar to Dear Esther, where you're walking around, but you're also covering the story. All right, so it's very exploration-heavy gameplay. Give us a release date for Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. I believe that um, it's coming. They said it was fall um, of this year. But give us an official release date for Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. All right. Street Fighter V, show us a new trailer, show us gameplay, and give us a release date, alright? Give us a release date. Now, I know they said it was coming out next year, um, but I would really like to see a release date for Street Fighter V. Um, I'm not a huge fighting game fan, but it'd be pretty cool to see you know, them come out with it and, and basically say, hey, this is uh, what the game looks like, this is a brand new trailer, it's coming next year at so-and-so on this day. So, look forward to it. God of War 4 reveal, I hope not. But you know they're gonna probably want to do that. I'm so tired of the God of War series. There's no need you need to do other ones. The, I, God of War has not changed in, term, in terms of its core gameplay. God of War has stayed, stayed the same ever since it released. It's just been refined and retooled. You know they're making God of War 3 remastered coming out next month. Seriously, God of War 4? Why? Why? Just let it die. I mean, you don't need to bring it. This series started on the PS2. You let you stretched it through two console generations, and now you're going to stretch it to three? I mean, this isn't Mario, okay? The, you, the, people don't care that much enough about God of War. It just doesn't matter, alright? So just let it go. But they're probably going to want to reveal, and then God of War 4 gameplay. So, reveal for God of War 4. A teaser for Quantic Dreams brand new PS4 game. You know they're working on something. We know that they came out with that trailer and they basically talked about the player, the, the facial movements and how it's going to be more about expressing emotion. Emotion in character faces is so hard, but Quantic Dream, if anyone, if anyone can do it, Quantic, Quantic Dream can do it. All right, so I'd love to see a new teaser for their new game. I'm a fan of anything Quantic Dream puts out. They just remastered Indigo Prophecy, um, or Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy for the PC. I do plan on getting it at a later date. Uh, but I loved Beyond Two Souls, I loved Heavy Rain, so uh, looking forward to whatever next game Quantic Dream comes out with. They're definitely going to take advantage of the PS4 hardware. I mean, Quantic, no, Beyond Two Souls was almost photorealistic. There was one instance in the game, one scene, where for a brief second it looked completely photorealistic and it faked my eyes out. I honestly thought that was a real person. Because the, it was the scene, it was the scene based off the lighting effects and the way the character was looking, where he, where he was looking, where, where all of his facial animations were, it was near perfect. It, it, it hit that perfection spot point for about one or two seconds and then I was brought back to reality. So Quantic Dream, with the PS4 hardware, they were that close at the end with the PS3. They could do it completely photorealistic. They can do completely photorealistic with the PS4 hardware. Completely photorealistic. Do it, Quantic Dream. Do it. Bloodborne expansion. They're probably going to reveal it and talk about the plans for it and what's coming up and what you can expect. So, Bloodborne expansion. And then that's all I have for the Sony press conference. So that's a lot, all right? But they do have a lot of cool stuff coming up, all right? Let's go. Let's move on to Square Enix so I can hurry up and finish this video. Square Enix, all right? Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Gameplay and the release window revealed. Now, they did say that they will, they will actually reveal. They did confirm that they will actually reveal Deus Ex Mankind gameplay at the Square Enix E3 press conference. I cannot freaking wait, man. 
It's gonna be freaking exciting. You guys know, next to Mirror's Edge, Deus Ex is the second most game I'm looking forward to. And kind of, I have a freaking poster here on my wall for the game. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it, all right? Let's hope for a, uh, a spring 2016 release. That sounds really nice. Uh, I hope it doesn't release, you know, uh, at the end of this year. I think that's a little bit too soon. Well, I I'm just thinking about myself because I'm planning, I'm building a new computer. And I want to have this computer built before games like Deus Ex and Fallout 4 and Mirror's Edge come out. Because I want to play those games at 4K at 60 frames. So, I'm hoping when that computer does get built, the first week of January or so, or at the very, very end of December, I'm hoping that um, you know those games don't come out before then. But, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, gameplay, and a release window revealed, alright? New Hitman game! They've been teasing it! Alright, they kind of teased it, but yeah, let's be honest, a new Hitman game reveal, trailer, and gameplay. A lot of hardcore Hitman fans weren't a fan, but I loved Absolution. I, I, it was the first Hitman game I played, so I didn't have the previous knowledge of what the first games were like, but I loved Absolution. Fantastic, surprisingly fantastic story that was interesting, engaging, um, almost somewhat emotional at the time. It was really a, it really helped build the character for me, because I thought the character... I thought Agent 47 was just a badass with a gun, he didn't really have a personality, no. This added real character and depth to the actual, uh, you know, uh, Agent 47 persona. And so I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, a new Hitman game based off, because absolutely was completely fantastic, so, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, show reveal trailer and show us gameplay on Next Gen Home. Absolute, Absolution looked amazing on PC, it looked really good on, on consoles too, so show us, like, you know, real next-gen visuals. Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Everyone's losing their minds. Kingdom Hearts 3, Kingdom Hearts 3, Kingdom Hearts 3. Never played the Kingdom Hearts game before. Not kidding. Never played them. So I'm not really super, 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 super hyped. My best friend, though, is super, 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 super hyped. He's looking forward to it. He hopes that he will see some uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay, or at least a trailer, at least a trailer saying, oh, it's coming. Probably 2017. But, yeah, talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Final Fantasy XV, they're, they're, they already said they're not going to show anything at E3, but it would be nice to see like a teaser trailer for Gamescom. That's another game. Final Fantasy XV is skipping E3 for Gamescom. Why? E3 is like bigger than Gamescom. Don't you want your game to be shown at E3 for a bigger audience than Gamescom? No? Okay. But uh, yeah, we'll see uh, Final Fantasy XV at Gamescom, and... Uh, Maybe we'll see a trailer, a little teaser trailer for what they're going to show at Gamescom at the E3 press conference for Square Enix. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider trailer with a multi-platform release announcement. It's coming to the PS4 and PC. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but I would be pretty cool if they revealed the trailer. Um, I believe the game is going to be multi-platform. I truly believe the game is going to be multi-platform later on. But I don't think Square Enix is even allowed to talk about it. I think Microsoft signed a contract with them and said, Oh, you, well, you cannot talk about the PS4 and PC versions until we come out with the Xbox One version, which is coming out at the end of this year. But it would be pretty cool if we see a new trailer for Rise of the Tomb Raider, and if they're able to um, announce that it's coming to multiple platforms, PC and PlayStation 4. Don't you fucking dare put it on PS2. It's already being ported at 360. Why? Why are you putting it on 360? Stupid. Stupid, stupid. It's a sale. That's it. Sleeping Dogs sequel. Announcement. Make it happen. People love Sleeping Dogs. I love Sleeping Dogs. Uh, played it on 360. Bought it on PC. Never had a chance to play it on PC. Bought the Definitive Edition on PC. Never played the Definitive Edition yet on PC, but uh, Sleeping Dogs 2, announce it, say it's coming, yes. Just Cause 3, show a huge gameplay reveal, show us blowing up shit, Just Cause 2 is fantastic, I own uh, the original, I own Just Cause 2 on PC, I played it, I, haven't beat, I never beat Just Cause 2 because I played it first on 360, really liked it, bought it on PC, Played it, but never beat. I need to beat Just Cause 2 before Just Cause 3. But supposedly Just Cause 3 is coming out at the end of this year. Um, so yeah, show us a gameplay reveal. Go like all out, guns blazing, explosions. Graphics look amazing from the trailer that we already saw. So looking forward to that. And that's what I have for the Square Enix press conference. All right. So 
Yeah, let me, let me know if I missed anything, guys. And let's move on to the last, but certainly not least, PC Gaming Show. The PC Gaming Show, hosted by AMD and PC Gamer. All right. Now we have a lot of different... We, I don't even know what the PC Gaming Show is, to be honest with you. Is it a press conference, or is it like a press conference slash event? Because I'm going to the thing. I'm going to the, to the PC Gaming Show. But I honestly don't know if it's going to be just a press conference or if it's going to be a press conference. Oh, and then we have a little event where you can actually go and play the games that are being shown. Because then it'll be like a mini E3, which would be awesome, because then I can play games. I can play games. So we'll have to see how the PC Gaming Show stacks up what it is exactly. Um, new game from Fulbright Studios. Fulbright made Gone Home. Gone Home was excellent. Very emotional story, very character-driven story. Very great atmosphere. So Gone Home was great. Um, announce, uh, announce a new game. It would be pretty awesome if Fulbright Studios, the, the developers of Gone Home, announced a new game. Definitely looking forward to that, alright? Um, we know that Microsoft is going to be there. They're probably going to be talking about DirectX 12, undoubtedly. So DirectX 12, looking forward to it because we get to stack VRAM. I need to, I'm getting twin 980Ti's, 6 gigabytes of each. Give me 12 gigabytes of VRAM total for um, you know, the video cards with DirectX 12, so I want DirectX 12 like immediately uh, because just of the benefits and things like that. But yeah, they're probably gonna talk about DirectX 12 going more in depth with it and just things like that. Yeah, Census is hosted by AMD. The AMD is probably gonna come out and reveal the R9 300 series that a lot of people are looking forward to. I'm an NVIDIA guy, I buy NVIDIA cards, I like AMD's cards better, and Vega's cards better, excuse me. And they seem to be more optimized for most of the games that come out. But if you're a huge AMD fan, there's nothing knocking. My best friend has AMD cards. His computer runs just great. Uh, they're probably going to reveal the R9 300 series. Give us an announcement. Give us a release date. And they're going to want to get that out as quickly as possible to compete with the 980 Ti and Titan X. All right. Soma gameplay. More Soma gameplay. More trailer. Release date. Yes. Okay. Actually, I think it's. I think. Do we have a release date for Soma? Is it coming out? Blizzard's gonna be there. I don't know if Blizzard's going to announce. I don't care because I'm not interested in anything Blizzard makes. I don't care about Hearthstone. I don't care about Warcraft. I don't give a shit. So, I don't care about Blizzard. Alright, Blizzard's gonna be there. They're gonna announce something. Creative Assembly! Yeah! They made Alien Isolation. Really good. Alright. It's too early for another Alien Isolation a sequel. It's too early. We probably may see it next year. Alright, so Alien Isolation 2. If there's a reveal at all, it might be next year, 2016, but, uh, yeah, they're gonna announce something, maybe it's another strategy that I'm not even interested in, but, yeah, there's a sequel to Alien Isolation, it's coming next year, alright, it's gonna be announced next year, alright, don't, don't try to fool yourself and say, oh my gosh, it's coming, that's, like, that's why I didn't mention Watch Dogs 2 for Ubisoft, it's only been since the midway of 2014, and you expect them to have something within a year? Really? To have something to show? I mean, let's be real here. So, uh, Creative Assembly announced something. Um, if it's a strategy game, I don't care. It, it's not going to be Alien Isolation. Alright, it's two. It's not going to be it might be a sequel to that. A new game. I, I put new game from Fulbright twice. So, never mind that one. Square Enix is going to come out on stage. They're going to be there. And they're probably going to talk about Trust Effects and Deus Ex and Tomb Raider. And they're probably going to talk about their DirectX 12 implementations into their new upcoming games. So, yeah, we'll probably see details around that, um, because if Square Enix is there, and if AMD's there, they're going to talk about Trust Effects, because Square Enix is the only developer that used Trust Effects in their games. Deus Ex is going to have Trust Effects, Tomb Raider had Trust Effects, Rise of the Tomb Raider is going to have Trust Effects, but no other game that I played has ever had Trust Effects that wasn't a Square Enix title. So they're probably going to talk about Trust Effects and Deus Ex and Tomb Raider. Cliff Wazinski is going to be there. Um, I was going to say, oh, he's going to announce a new thing, but it was just announced today that Blue Streak Studios, his game studio, is not announcing their game or showing their game at this year's E3. Will be next year, maybe, probably, but not this year. So I don't know why Cliff Wazinski is going to be there. Um, maybe he's just there to chill, so maybe I'll say hi if he's there and uh, get a selfie picture with him. It'd be pretty cool. Oh, and then just to top it off with something amazing, Final Fantasy XV PC announcement. Come on. People like me want to be able to play it in 4K and 60 frames per second, alright? Come on, make it happen. Final Fantasy XV PC, please, please. The game looks amazing on console as it is. It'd be really awesome if it does that. 
So that's what I have for my E3 predictions. All right, lots of lots of lots of stuff, but I want to get this video out. I wanted to at least put some effort and quality into it so you guys know. Um, let me know what you guys are also excited for for Bethesda, Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, Sony, Square Enix, and PC Gaming Show. And uh, I'll be at the Bethesda, Microsoft, Sony, and PC Gaming Show conferences. So I'll definitely be recording videos um, and definitely be, uh, you know, just showing, showcasing the whole process of what it's like getting in, where we're sitting. You guys are going to see all that. It's going to be less videos in terms of vlogs than last year's because most of the videos we did were driving. I'm not going to do that this year, alright? Probably one video of me waking up, one video of us driving there, one video of us getting there and walking in, one video of us with our impressions on the way home. That's it. So, but it's going to be quality content, quality over quantity. Remember that. So, I will talk with you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, let me know if you let me know if I missed anything with these, uh, you know, um, predictions. What are you most excited for? And I will see you guys at E3 come June 14th, which is my 21st birthday as well. So, lots of exciting things. All right, have a good one, guys. Talk to you later.